it's your brother, Larry Adenekon, welcoming you to the Really, Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God, all powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Education, the PLACE. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to your generation, gem to upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We're sharing truth this morning on power to barricade the enemy, to get enemy, keep the, the Satan at bay, coming from uh, Matthew chapter 26, 1 through 13. We're praying together now in our life chapter, we dive into it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Heavenly Father, for a wonderful, wonderful weekend. We give you all, all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for the celebrations and, and stuff. We will just worship you and trust you, God, that you will turn things around for us as a nation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, this morning as we go into this, we receive help from you. In Jesus' His holy name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Some churches are holding um, their own uh, version of the... Independence stop today. Okay, then one more time. Congratulations. Matthew 26 from 1. Uh, now it came to pass when Jesus had finished all the saints that he said to his disciples, You know that after two days is the Passover and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests, the scribes, and elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest who was called Caiaphas and plotted to take Jesus by trickery and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, let there be an opera among the people. And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him, having an alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for, for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not always have. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Surely I say unto you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, that what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Hallelujah. All right, so the first thing we saw was that uh, Jesus had been saying this to his disciples that he will go up to Jerusalem, he will be delivered, he will be killed, the third day he will rise again. Um, you know, he had been saying all that for about six months. You know, and now he said, you know that after days, two days is the Passover and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. He now was very, very specific two days time. It was not a general thing, you know, I'm going to Jerusalem, things are going to happen to me there. Peter was like, I'm going to become, you know, negative, you know, and all that. This time around, he said two days. High degree of specificity. And what we see again there is this thing about seeing into the future knowing that things you know things will happen not even things that are going to be uh, far-fetched or long-term kind of a thing two days it was a short-term thing it was so very very specific and it was so very very precise in two days is passover and during the passover so so and so and so will happen yeah it was so sure of it and it brings up again to, to to my mind and to share with us again this thing about our own brand of um, Christianity, Pentecostalism, be, uh, being in the Holy Spirit and things. It's as if we are, we are just putting our, our feet, you know, into the waters. We have not dived into stuff, into it to enjoy to the level that Jesus enjoyed. And I keep challenging myself and everybody who, uh, who listen to me, why don't we go to God and say, God, these things that the Lord experienced, we also should be experiencing. This promise of the holy spirit will show us things to come yeah this is these are things to come and not things that will come in the year 2540 no things that will happen in two days there's going to be passover yes everybody knew that but that's when i'm going to be crucified it was so very very short and i think it's something we should challenge ourselves about and say god you know get this get this done for us the second thing i saw again here is this um, it's not really written here, but in some other ones it says, With great desire have I desire to have this, this final Passover with you guys before I go. Um, Satan had been trying to kill him so many times. At times he would walk through the crowd. At times he would just convey himself away somehow. At times all kinds of you know, attempts of the devil to kill him. But somehow he was not able to kill him. In other words, it seems to me that Jesus was able to use his spiritual power 
to keep the enemy, to check the enemy, to barricade the enemy, not to allow him to to uh, kill him before the time he w he would love to um, to go, to make it um, to synchronize it with the with the Passover and make it more symbolic to those of us who understand all that, you know, uh, and all that. So all the efforts of Satan, he was able to checkmate and keep and keep at bay. Satan wasn't able to do anything until he said, okay. I give you room now. And I think that we should learn that how we can um, deploy our spiritual resources to keep the enemy and be to check the enemy and say, no, until I give you room, you will not be able to do this. Until I give you, until I say, okay, maybe you will not be able to do this. I'm going to barricade you, buy you, make it impossible for you to do it. And you know, Jesus promised us that. Yeah, he says anything we forbid. Yeah, shall be forbidden. Yeah, that's the way we can do that. And we, we should actually uh, train ourselves, develop ourselves to a place where we can say, we, we, Satan, I know that you, you control things in this place. You, you are the God of this world. You are the prince of this world, like Jesus called him. You know, you, you, you run a lot of stuff here. Yeah, but you see, I'm also being sent to police you. He says, the Son of Man has been sent to destroy all the works of the devil. And he says, as the Father has sent me, so have I sent you. So, I, I mean, yeah, so he has sent us. So I'm, I'm here to police you to keep you you know the way the police keep barricades and keep the crowds yeah under control yes that's the way we're supposed to keep put the barricade and keep satan under control amen that's my job yes i know that you run stuff here but you know not well here yeah, you know i'm going to keep you in check in this place that should be that should be our case and we should actually uh pray about that and gone for that and uh, by the grace of god reach those uh heights in Jesus' mighty name. So verse 3. The chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people assembled at the palace of the high priest, who, whose name was Caiaphas, and began to plot to kill Jesus. Now, see what was going on. These people, they were told them, they were holding a meeting to, to say to them, say, look, it is high time we got this, this thing done, you know, and all that. And they were holding a meeting, not knowing that the reason they were able to hold that meeting was that Jesus had now allowed Satan to have... To have his way that's that's what has happened there in other words they never realized that they were being puppeteered you know by set and as long as the hand having the strings was checked they couldn't do anything but when that hand was released he was able to do some stuff now these people they were holding what looks like a totally natural meeting but from what we studied here that natural meeting was able to hold because certain things that happened in the spirit realm jesus had now said okay i'll give you room yeah this is your hour i'll give you room that's why they were able to hold that their meeting and these things happen a lot some things that seem so natural seem so normal seem so every day but they are really really determined from elsewhere and it is important for a child of god to have that on understanding and therefore influence that elsewhere <laughs> praise the lord influence the spirit realm so that um things will happen as you want them here or as they should be here amen and then they said not during the feast so that there will not be an opera among the people let's give it to them at least they fear the people they respected the people they didn't want the people to be outraged so they planned their thing so that it will not be at a time when the people are going to be outraged. Isn't that far better than a situation where a political class thinks that what people think does not matter? That they don't care what anybody, you know, what anybody thinks. I think it's still better than that. So then there was a story of the Bethany and um, the woman having uh, pouring some fragrant oil upon him. And the Bible says when the disciples saw it, they were indignant and said, well, we are familiar with this story. But what I want to point out here is that no name was mentioned here in the synoptic gospel that market matthew mark luke no name was mentioned there but in john john mentioned the name of judas there and so you will ask ourselves oh were the others trying to cover who did it or who said so or, or john was uh, had had enough his ears were full <laughs> about what uh, judas was doing maybe because of his closeness to jesus i don't know but he mentioned his name he even called him some other stuff you know uh, you know that it was judas that was that made the statement <laughs> You know things like that maybe john had privileged information i don't know but he mentioned him while these other ones just just his disciples you know and some people around said you know they didn't they didn't want to say who said so maybe they were just being nice people i don't know <laughs> praise god yeah but maybe john had privileged information maybe that's why i said and so it's, yeah when jesus got aware of it he said to them why are you troubling the woman 
She has done a good work for me because you have the poor always and you don't have me always. This is one of the scary scriptures, you know, of the Bible when it says you, there will always be the poor. Always there will be the poor. And um, you ask yourself, why will there always be the poor? For a number of reasons, there will always be the poor. There, will, there is something called inertia, that thing that makes you reluctant to start something. If you allow inertia to totally overtake you, you will not be able to move. You have great ideas and this and that, but you will not be able to do anything. Another reason people remain poor is what I call the blame game. They are blaming everybody else except themselves. No doubt they are not taking responsibility. When you are not taking responsibility, it's likely to lead you to poverty. Um, um, at the end of the day, which other one, which other one, which other one. Um, okay, um, take for example, when you are free to take risks, yeah, when you 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 are okay, risk risk phobia, let's call it that, risk phobia. You are free to take risks, yeah, it can keep you you know, limited, bound, chained. You are not able to go. You are not able to, you know, get anything done because you cannot take uh, um, um, risks. And a number of other things that could be. Uh, you don't listen to advice. It's only your own thing, you know, and all that. That's another reason, another thing that makes people like that. We don't, that's not our focus today. Or at times when you are eating your your seed, what's supposed to be your seed, you turn into bread and you eat it. But that's not our focus today. So. It now says, for impouring this fragrant oil upon my body, she did it for my burial. Wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, this thing will be spoken about this woman for a memorial. Those times when you just do things for the Lord because you love the Lord. Not knowing that the Lord was going to pay special, peculiar attention to it that will make it a memorial in the presence of God. Hallelujah. That's what, and we are reading this matter today. That woman never expected that Jesus would make a statement like that. Or that this thing will be a story we are all reading. Or that you stand before God as a memorial. She just did it. You know, out of her love for Christ, out of her love for God, she just expressed herself. And so, um, there are certain things, when they come to your mind to do for God, just go ahead and do. You never know which of the things you do that will now stand for a memorial. Before Look, Jesus said, she has poured this thing upon my body for my burial. The woman never knew there was going to be any burial. Amen. But that was the way Jesus interpreted it. Out of all the things you do for God, you don't know the one the Lord will interpret in such a way as to touch the heart of God and to declare that this is going to be a memorial before me for the rest of eternity. So, as it comes to your heart, do not suppress it. Do not kill it. Do not quench it. Go ahead and get it done for God and uh, you'll be only be rewarded at the end of the day. We're going to stop here today by the grace of God. We're going to wish you a very fine time um, at, at your workplace and of course a work week will be will be blessed one for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for being here.